In a world constantly evolving, opportunities are everywhere. The majority will only see the problems, but we know that every problem is an opportunity. But how do we transform it into a solution? It's not just hard work or inspiration, it's a journey of transformation. Allow me to introduce Not Just Accelerator, where ideas take shape and are launched in just three months. Meet Ted and Gigi, two founders that joined the Accelerator with great ideas and a lot of desire to make them a reality. My name is Gigi Piscitelli. I used to be a music producer working in the industry for more than 25 years. And I've been a creative all my life. The problem is by being a creative, I've kind of struggled all my life to make enough money to survive. So after a lot of struggle, I decided, well, I have to do something about it. And I started to think about what can I do to change the creator's economy. And that's when blockchain at the same time was ready to be more ready for the public to accept it rather than just for tech people. And I've decided, okay, so with blockchain, we can create something which is a new economy for the creative industry to finally have a, a, a different approach to it. My name is Ted Haile, uh, and I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. I think I've always been interested in, in startups for many years. Uh, I've just never actually you know, ventured on to actually create one. Just with the release of ChatGPT and, and large language models in general, I think they're so powerful that it just made me want to get involved in launching a startup. All right, I'm Vadim. I'm the founder of Not Just Dev. And here we are helping people build mobile applications. And we do that with a very hands-on experience because that's the best way to, to actually learn something. So yeah, for the last three years, I've been working at the Academy, which is our React Native courses. And there we have one weekly uh, group coaching where we meet with students and we talk about course questions, anything about React Native. But what I found out is that the most value that I brought to those meetings were exactly to people who had a side project, who were working on their startup and they needed help with the implementation, with designing, with architecting the, the application and with other advice on how to, to build it properly. After a lot of these meetings, I decided that we have to do something. Uh, we have to create a way to help more people and uh, more founders build their application and see their ideas uh, there on the market. The reason why I became, a, well, I'm not a developer. The reason why I decided to build my own app by myself is because unfortunately, by the time I had the idea, first was COVID, then blockchain crash, then the war. And basically every investor I spoke to, they like, oh, well, if you don't have users, it's not gonna be very easy for us to invest in you. I mean, we cannot invest the amount of money you need to build the app just over an idea. And after three years of work looking for funding, I just realized I don't want to throw away three years. I need to find a way to build it. And I think I'm very good and a very fast learner. So I decided, well, let me check what does involve to build an app. And I found Vadim's channel and I started with just like a few apps that he builds. And then I kind of thought, well, he's got a course, which is more an in-depth course about developing with the backend as well. So let me see if maybe I'm gonna be able to build it myself. So I like, okay, let me clean my calendar. 12 hours a day, three months later, I've released the first beta version, which is now public. And I have to say that I'm shocked by the results because it is a fully functional app. It is as fast as any other app and people are enjoying it. Gigi is the person who actually convinced me that you don't have to have a lot of technical experience in order to build and launch a startup. He started uh, in April with zero coding experience and with a very big desire of having this application done. He didn't take a no for an answer, he went for it and it had a price because he was working more than 10, 12 hours a day. He was investing a lot of time, but hey, like that shows us that it's possible if we want it enough. I'm pretty stubborn as a human being and therefore failure is not acceptable. At the beginning, I have to say, it was very difficult because just to make it clear, I had, had no, I mean, I had very, very little experience with coding. So from going to no experience to build 
a professional app that could be on, a, on an app store. I thought it was much easier than it is, even though everybody told me I was crazy. <laughs> it was just too important to finish it, just to see it through. I have to have a product that works. So I know if it doesn't work, it's not because I didn't build the app, but it's because the idea is not good enough. So uh, after we, I had this idea of the accelerator, I didn't want to jump right into creating it because that's not the, the lean way. The lean way or the methodology that we are teaching is to first of all test the idea, do a pilot version and see if there is a need for such a solution. And that's exactly what we did. I decided to do a pilot program, a closed one. Uh, I didn't talk about this anywhere. I simply sent a very short email with a subject line, I want to help you build an application. I sent this to all our students uh, and we had 20 applications and from the from 20 application we picked five projects and we started working with them two of these projects uh, dropped out in the first week it wasn't for them but three of them that continue working all three had the project uh, finished and published on the market by the end of the pilot program which I consider a very big success. I couldn't imagine that from the pilot program, so many applications will actually be built and published to the market. So yeah, I do have a, I have a tech background, but it's more on the back end. And so the thing I was looking for is more of like, uh, you know, the React Native piece of the front end development. So I think it started with just following Vadim's videos on not just dev. I don't remember how exactly I, I found his, his channel, but immediately I think it, it, I could see it was very useful. He was building full applications and live streaming the entire thing. So over time, I kind of learned uh, a lot about React Native and, and UI development. Once ChatGPT was released, I got more involved with, with it and wanted to build an application that used it as a, as a backend. So Recap is a language learning application that allows users to read news articles from around the world, as well as focused around like different interests that they have. So if they're interested in technology or entertainment or uh, whatever the case may be, they can go straight away and start uh, reading articles in their target language about things that they're interested in or they would normally read uh, in their own in their native languages. So as I mentioned before, I've been following Vadim for, for quite a while, but I also uh, purchased his, his academy course. And I think through he made an announcement through for all of the registered users of the academy about this uh, accelerator and I immediately applied for it right away. Tad had a day job and he had limited amount of time to spend at this application. And because he had more technical experience, he actually managed to have this application implemented by the end, even with a day job. So he was spending a lot of time in the evenings, in the weekends, but yeah, in the end, he, he managed to build something impressive. We've been lucky enough to be part of three different accelerators. All of them were impact accelerators because what we're doing is consider impactful towards the creative industry or the work industry in general. So we've been part of three accelerators. Two of them were, were financed by the European Union and the major mayor of London, but they were all about kind of the business side of things. So we've learned how to write a business plan, how to make a pitch deck, how to kind of sell ourselves what they didn't offer because they expected us to have already a CTO who could build the app. And because of what happened, we were kind of waiting for funding to get then a CTO who was going to be able to build the app. That didn't happen. And uh, for me, the only option was to just uh, do it myself. And I started a course as to become just, you know, to learn about development. And when Vadim said, oh, I'm, I'm doing a pilot about people that have an idea and want to basically build an app. As a result, I'm like, well, this is exactly what I need. For the Accelerator, we actually select a very small group of projects that we believe have a chance and uh, that we find that the founders are dedicated enough to make this a reality because it's difficult, it's challenging. So we need to, to see people that are motivated, that are willing to give everything in order to, to see their ideas uh, there on the market. You need to make a choice. Do you want to build it fast and, and well, or do you want to take another year and you know waste basically 12 months to maybe finish and, and, and waste a year because it didn't work out? So once you join the Accelerator, we go for a three months program where we divided it in three actual phases. So in the first month, uh, you don't actually start coding and that's surprising for a lot of developers because a lot of us love to just jump into the working mode and build feature after feature, but usually that leads to nothing. That leads to an application with a lot of feature that doesn't give 
or doesn't provide enough value to the users. So instead uh, of that, we actually spend the first month in the discovery mode. We go ahead, we define the problem, we identify the problems, we try to talk with customers to understand if this is a painful enough problem for us to solve and if the solution that we are thinking about will be useful for them. So it's a lot of work with end users, with researching, with uh, businessing and market in order to understand how you're going to get your first 100 users. Working on a startup, you might have a thousand different ideas or different features that you want to that you want to build. I think the process with the accelerator is to simplify and focus on the things that are actually going to get you the most value uh, up front. Like you might want to do some kind of you know great looking designs or adding additional features that that might be cool but at the same time you really need to focus that you're solving a problem for your users so the accelerators help me kind of make sure that i you know always keep my eyes on on solving those problems rather than uh, building cool features during the second month we go into the heavy building mode there we implement the features we realize the roadmap that we have planned in month one and by then we have a working MVP. During this process, uh, we work a lot with the projects to help them with technical questions, with challenges that they face implementing this stuff. Uh, and we also work uh, and help them a lot in the prioritization process to think about what features are the most important or what feature will bring the most learnings. During this phase of the startup, the most important asset that you uh, you can get is the learnings and the knowledge about a problem or about an industry. The whole point about the accelerator is that I had the technical expertise of them helping, which was the only thing in general that I, I missed because I, I'm pretty good in the business side. And that's what I do now as a, as a lecturer in university. I've had to learn quite a lot quite quickly and a lot of time, you know, I didn't know where to find an answer and thankfully Vadim has always an answer I don't know how <laughs> but yeah he has become to us almost like a advisor technical CTO because without him I would have never been able to do what I've done for sure integrating the application with chat GPT was fairly straightforward but then one of the challenges I encountered early on is is the amount of time it takes to generate the full response so I worked with Vadim over you know a couple of weeks on strategies on how to optimize that and so getting that to work efficiently and making sure that all of the pieces from streaming it from the back end to to the application was kind of a challenge and Vadim helped uh, you know walk through that process to where it's at today our focus is on the technical side so we not only give you advice on how to create a business plan and how to build a startup in Fury, but we actually help you implement that with a lot of technical advice on how to how to do it right from the beginning. I think having guidance throughout this process is great. Having Vadim, who obviously knows React Native, you know, in and out, he's also launched his own startup, so he can talk to you about different aspects of you know where you're at in your in your journey. So having that those checkpoint meetings with him, being able to share whether it's something about some code that's not working properly and he can help, you know, debug it or some strategy around whether it's pricing or other features to incorporate into the app. I do think it's possible to, to do it all by yourself, but obviously there's just a lot of work that needs to be done and any help that you can get uh, in the early stages, especially if you're not like a you know very tenured React Native developer, uh, I think it's crucial. We're not only going to help you with the technical stuff, specifically for your project, but we're also going to help you with the business side, with the marketing side, with validating the problem and the solution that you're gonna build. That's why it's also something challenging for us as well, because we realized that we need more people on the team. We started bringing experts that have done this, that have specialized in different areas that will, will be there to, to help you increase the chances of success. Aside the technical help from Vadim, I think not being by yourself in the sense that the weekly meetings, seeing what they struggle is and kind of understanding each other and also seeing that, you know, even though I'm not a developer and the others are, <laughs> I could see they also struggle on things. So it was very motivating to see everybody basically on the same boat trying to get to the goal of delivering a good app. Like you get to share your frustrations with, with, with other people. So whenever you're doing that, uh, you know, in a group setting, I think you get to know people pretty well. The truth is that nine out of 10 startups fail. And one of the biggest reason is coming from the fact 
but there is so much uncertainty when you're building a startup. All of these uncertainties is very challenging and without the right guidance, without the right mentors, it's difficult to navigate this world. It's difficult to know how to approach users, customers, investors, even like what stack to choose, how to architect everything in order to, to be able to scale. We need to know what to prioritize because our time is so, so limited and our priority should be uh, to build something as fast as possible in order to learn as fast as possible. One of the biggest things was saying like, this is the time that you have to, to build this application. And on September 1st, there's gonna be a demo day. So you have to you know, figure out what features you're gonna build uh, and, and make sure that they're ready to you know, be launched um, for the demo. And I think sometimes you know, people can be kind of shy about launching and you know, maybe it's not, I feel like it's not ready for prime time. I think this program has kind of pushed me to say, well, one, there's a demo day, so you're gonna have to launch something. So from that regard, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited because I'm gonna see this product all the way through and then you know get some feedback from users. So that, that part is exciting. I guess it was well-structured in the sense that we went from creating a business plan or business canvas, then start building the app. And now we are in the last month, which is kind of um, testing it and getting user into it. Thanks to the first month, when we get at this point, we should already have a list of users that are willing, that show the interest in our product and that are willing to, to, to help you test it. You, you gather feedback from them, you start planning already the, the next phase uh, and the next phase is going to be after you graduate the accelerator. We end everything with a demo day where the projects have opportunity to present the result of their work for the last three months. I can't wait to the actual day when it's actually going to be used by more than just friends and family. And again, I know then it's not going to be perfect even on the first release, like we'll hopefully get some good feedback and then very quickly iterate to incorporate those changes into the app. It's a great feeling to know that uh, it'll be uh, live soon and, and uh, you know people will be able to provide some feedback. If you are not committed to your idea, uh, don't start. I have lost a girlfriend, <laughs> it's true. People like Gigi are the ones who will actually change the world. The ones who see problems out there and are bold enough not to complain about it, but to say that I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna dedicate my time and I'm gonna try to solve this issue for the society. The pilot program was not only a success for the projects for Gigi, Ted, Edis and the other projects, but it was also important for us to gather feedback and to use it to improve the program. So the next batch is gonna be even better than the pilot program and we hope to see even more applications on the market by the end of it. So if you have ideas and if you're motivated to implement them. Our next batch is upcoming and we are looking for 10 exceptional developers that we would work with during the next three months. If you think that that's you, make sure to apply. Let us know what's your idea and what's your background and I would have a pleasure to talk with you in an interview.